Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I made my size comparison. Because if you notice in this video, it says the video was uploaded on May 30th, 2020, but in reality I actually finished it almost two months ago. So believe it or not, it took me about three weeks to go from part 30 to finishing the entire comparison. So that's about 70 videos I made in three weeks. And so if you think about it, that's, that's over three videos per day. And I'm going to show you how I did this. So first, I made sure I had all the objects collected before moving on to create part 30. And I did, for the most part. I had to actually uh, fix some things with larger stars and getting more exoplanets and whatnot. But they were only minor things. Okay, so I made sure I had all the objects in a spreadsheet. But the way I decided to do it was I decided to make different spreadsheets. So here are the different spreadsheets I, ha I made with the different object sizes. So what I did was I planned out what the size range would be for each individual part. And since I already, I could do this since I already finished collecting all the objects. And you probably noticed that all my size comparison parts, they have the same format. So this is the template I made for each size comparison part 30 through 100. And so I decided to make all of these for each individual part right away. So each part 30 through 100 was at first just the template. Now the thing I realized is that most people take way too long placing the name and size of the object in the size comparison. Most people would just type it individually in the text box. But what I decided to do was I manipulated the text in such a way that I made this. Now the reason why this is useful is because all I have to do now is just copy and paste it into a text box. So here is a demonstration of that. Okay, so I did this for every part, 30 through 100, and that's actually really quick, as you can see. And you can get faster at it the more you do it. Now, the reason why I can do it really fast is also because I have a second monitor, so that makes it really easy for me if I have my, my um, Google slide presentation, which is what I use to make the size comparison on one screen, and my Google sheet or my spreadsheet of all the information on the other monitor. So once I've done this, next all I would need to do is add images for each of the names of the objects. Now for places like cities, countries, or even galaxies, all I had to do was search them up online. But how exactly did I easily get images for thousands of asteroids, exoplanets, and stars? So here's how. For asteroids, I actually made my own extra presentation where I collected random images of asteroids, so ones you wouldn't recognize. And as you can see, I had them all on the standard size that I use for each object, which in Google Slides, the standard size I use is 2.1. So that's what the size of almost every object is in my size comparison. It's 2.1 on Google Slides. Now, I only show an increase in the size of an object if the change in size is very significant. Like if I went from 30 kilometers to 35 kilometers, that's a pretty large change in size. You'd probably wanna so show how that is a change in size on your presentation or in your size comparison. But if the size change was only from 30 kilometers to 30.4 kilometers, there's no reason to show that there's an increase in size because the size change is actually really small. If you were to really see what that actual change in size would be, it wouldn't really look that large. So what I did for exoplanets was I actually used this site called robotplanet.dk where I had, where all I had to do was click on one of the exoplanets that they had, and I found the image of it. And I would just copy and paste them into my comparison. Now that's not where I got every exoplanet from because some of the, some of the more interesting exoplanets, I decided to look them up online because I knew they were gonna be more interesting to look at. Now for stars, things got quite interesting. And for almost every star, it was either the same seven images each time. So what I did was I made my own extra presentation for the different types of stars. And as you can see, I have all the stars I need on the slide. And so I can easily copy and paste them into the presentation. 
Now, I didn't have to look up the type of star for each, uh, for each of them because, well, I already collected that information as well. I already collected the spectral type of each of the stars. So as you can see in the spreadsheet that I made for stars, this is, I had, every, I had all that information on me. So that's basically it for adding images to my my size comparison. So next, once I added all this all these images to my size comparison, I basically aligned all the text on each slide with my images. And I aligned all that together on the slide. So I'll demonstrate this. So that is how I align the text and the images. And based on how I align the text and images, you can see why my presentation tends to run very smoothly. It's because everything is center aligned, and so it's never too far to the left, or ne it's and it's never too far to the right when it goes from slide to slide. So as you can see, many of the things I did here weren't that complicated at all. Now, I would definitely say that adding the text by a simple copy and paste is what really made me finish this entire thing really quickly. I'm not even kidding. It's like, it's, it's like really, really quick. Um, but it's also because I was dedicated to finishing this after my school closed down due to COVID-19. So I was motivated to finish this because I knew I could do it. So once I finished making all the parts for my comparison, I took about a day to record each part 30 through 100. And that's actually what I did. I recorded each part 30 through 100, basically the video recording of it. it. Took me only a day to do to record 70 videos like that. Since most of them are between five and 10 minutes long, you could probably do that. And then I took the next day to edit each video. And while I was editing, I was making the thumbnails for each video, which the thumbnails are actually really easy because they all had a similar format as well. And then once April 6th reached, I was done. So as you can see, I didn't make each individual part on its own. I worked on several parts at once by first adding text, then adding images, and then aligning those all together. Now I didn't do, I didn't just add text completely for all parts 30 through 100 and then add images for all parts 30 through 100 because that would have been over 10,000 objects and it would have taken a long time. It's, it's not the most efficient way to do it. So what I actually did was, is I basically split it up into three sections. So here are the sections I split it up into. And so in each of these sections, it took me about a week to do each of these second to, to, to do each of these sections. For example, going from parts 30 through 53, which is Mount Everest to Earth, I basically, for parts 30 through 53, I basically just added text for each slide and then I added the images for all those slides and then I aligned the text and images with each other and I did those from part 30 through 53. I, f I first started with the text and then once I was all done with the text for parts 30 through 53, I added all images for parts 30 through 53 and then I added or and then I aligned all the text and images and then I was done. And so it took me about a week to do that. Now that may seem quite crazy because it, I also made about 33 parts in one week, as you can see, part 67 through 100, which is from CT Chamberlain to B to the, to the size of the universe. It took me a week to do that. 
But remember, this this was mainly stars, right? Stars are almost the same images every time. Another thing you notice is, well, notice how parts 54 through 67, that's a really small amount of parts compared to parts 30 through 53 and 67 through 100. 54 through 67, that's a really small amount of parts. Now, that was much a much slower task because most exoplanets came from a website that I had to go back and forth on a lot of times. So, basically what I did was, I uploaded the videos that basically, that's as you can see, that's what took me a week to do. It took me a week to do each of those sections right there. Okay. So basically, I uploaded the videos with music that I thought would fit the video as best as possible, and that was it. Now, my ultimate goal in making this was actually not to finish this. Well, it was to finish the size comparison, but not to make it really, really long. I wanted to make it look like something that was a little bit more manageable to watch. And my ultimate goal is actually a fast forward version. I realized that it actually looked really cool in my opinion. And I also, I kind of think it, it's what makes the size comparison look more unique as well. So it was, my ultimate goal was really to make the fast forward compare, to make it a fast forward one because I thought it looked really cool. Now, the thing is, I'm really glad that some of you stayed until the end. And if, if you have an interest in trying to make a size comparison, I really think you guys could do something like that. So good luck. And that's basically it. And thanks, everyone.